from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Stettler, Alberta, for Father Don and the parishioners of Christ the King Parish in Stettler, Alberta, for the people of Stettler, for Pete and Lena Bergeron and their children of Cornwall, Ontario, and for a deepening of her faith and to live life to the fullest. The second is Mona Dooley from St. John's, Newfoundland, in memory of her husband, Donald Dooley, born June 28, 1930, and passed away on November 4, 2015, from St. John's, Newfoundland, and in thanksgiving to Our Lady of Fatima. The daily TV Mass brings meaning to the lives of thousands of Canadians across our land, and they join with me in thanking our donors for this great gift. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, we gather today before the altar of the Lord, offering ourselves, our desires, and our hopes that they too may be transformed with the bread and wine and strengthened in our life of service to Christ. As pilgrims, we walk on a journey knowing that there are times when we rise to the Lord and fall. In those moments of falling, we count on his mercy and his love. And we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then the voice that I had heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go, Take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, take it and eat. It will be bitter to your stomach, but sweet as honey in your mouth. So I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. Then the angel said to me, you must prophesy again about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling things there. And he said, it is written, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching in the temple. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people kept looking for a way to kill him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were spellbound by what they'd heard. The Gospel of the Lord. Several years ago, I was teaching at a school named St. Bonaventure's College in St. John's, Newfoundland. A wonderful school. It was filled with energy and with life. And yet, in the duties of every teacher in any school, and indeed in the duties of anyone in labor today, it was a very busy place. The needs of the community, no matter where we work, press upon us. And often we can feel overwhelmed by the pressures to achieve. One day while I was there, I saw a small cartoon tacked onto the wall in the staff room. And it showed a woman sitting at her desk and her boss standing over her. Her boss says to her, we must arrange the time when we are going to meet. And she said in return, let me check my calendar so that we can organize the meeting to discuss when we shall decide we're meeting. I saw that image and it stayed in my mind. And it came to me again today as I prayed with this gospel. The first reading reminds us that the words of Jesus that we hear are sweet to the tongue and the senses, for they are beautiful and true. And yet once taken into ourselves, they must be digested. They must be taken in and absorbed into who we are. And yet I ask myself again today, as I did in that staff room many years ago, do we have the time, do we make the time to be people who reflect, who contemplate the experiences of their day and take time to digest the presence of the Lord who is in our midst in every moment of our life? When an email comes in, there is the pressure to answer it. That ping that comes on our phone tells us, respond. 
And sometimes if we don't respond within a few minutes, the person who sent it wonders if we're actually okay. The phone rings, we must answer. The voicemails come in and the little red light on the phone bleeps telling us we must respond. There is a rush to life that suggests we are all the better a person if we can accomplish more and more things in a single day. It's in that rush of life that I do believe we lose sight of the ability and the need to be reflective people, to use the gifts that the Lord has given us to pray, to contemplate not only what is happening to us, but how we are to respond. It is perhaps this rat race, as it were, that affected the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the people of the temple so many centuries ago, those we heard about in today's gospel. A den of thieves my temple has become, says the Lord, for he saw the rush of the crowd lining up to purchase their doves and their animals for sacrifice. He heard the chinkling of the change as people paid for that opportunity. He saw the line after line of people hoping for the chance to dip into the healing waters and the fountains around the temple, and he saw the priests lining up too, preparing to officiate the sacrifice. And perhaps he asked himself, had it all become too mechanical? Had it all become too dimensional? Have these who fulfill the will of my Father every day laid out in the customs of the people of Israel, lost sight with the true spirit and meaning behind their action? Had the temple become a machine? Do we perhaps become a machine today as we answer the call of so many machines, asking for answers, asking for decisions, asking for replies? Brothers and sisters, today in the gospel we are asked to stop to reflect, to recognize that every moment of life is a gift, that every second of creation, every vision of beauty, every person we encounter, every voice that we hear, everything around us is gift. The end of days will come, no doubt. The end of each of our lives will come, no doubt. And yet it is in the moment, now, in this moment of reality, even as we listen to this Mass, that we can be present into an infinite mystery of the presence of Jesus in our hearts, in our souls, in our lives, and in the people that we love. Let us stop in the quietude of our heart. Let us be reflective on the ways in which the Lord is present to us. Let us open our minds in gratitude for all that we receive and that we have, for it is in that spirit of finding the Lord that we will taste his blessed word, that we will digest it, and we will live it. And now let us offer our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray for the Church, the people of God, that we might always be attentive to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and active in living it out. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the poor, the sick, and those in most need, that we might be the healing and caring hand of Christ for them. We pray to the Lord. Amen. As we prepare to welcome Christ into our world during the coming Adventide, let us pray for the grace to lovingly receive our newborn Savior in our hearts. For this grace, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, through the kindly light of your Spirit and in the image of your Son, we were born. You have planted deep desires in our hearts that we have named in this moment of faith. We pray that they may come to fulfillment through Christ Jesus, our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praise add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Jean de Brébeuf and his companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you, Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer by Father Joseph Tetlow? O oh Lord my God, 
You called me from the sleep of nothingness, merely because in your tremendous love you want to make good and beautiful beings. You have called me by my name in my mother's womb. You have given me breath and light and movement and walked with me every moment of my existence. I am amazed, Lord God of the universe, that you attend to me and more. Cherish me. Create in me the faithfulness that moves you, and I will trust you and yearn for you all my days. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go forth serving the Lord through your lives. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick, and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass.